On this episode of Still Loading, we're taking to the skies. Hey guys, it's Josh, and welcome to this new episode of Still Loading. Uh, for this week's episode in the 40 for 40 series, we are talking about the game Sky Shark, made by Taito for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now I know, as I've said before, we've been covering a lot of NES games, and that's because of the 40 for 40 series, but do not worry. Uh, we are definitely coming out of that soon. There's only a handful of more games left. I believe this is uh, game 32, I want to say. So I... Pretty sure we are going to be coming up to the end. Only eight more episodes of the 40 for 40, and I will be moving on to something else. I hope you all have been enjoying this journey with me as I go through these, not some of them obscure, some of them not so obscure NES games, uh, helping me pretty much just play my collection because I got a lot to play and I never really find time to do it. So without further ado, let's get on with this, shall we? So, Sky Shark is a game for the Nintendo Entertainment System, like I said before, and developed by Taito. And it is a top-down shooter, uh, similar to 1942, 1943, uh, the ride-in game, stuff like that, you know. It's, and honestly, it is pretty damn awesome. It's tough as shit, but it's pretty damn awesome. Uh, so, let's continue on. So, in true still loading style, let's talk about the, let's, t let's do a little bit of a, let's, let me describe, I can't speak today, apparently, but let me describe, uh, the box art. So, the cover of the box pretty much shows, uh, like, almost like a dog fight, uh, you know, airplanes fighting battleships, there's bullets flying everywhere, explosions, and there's this, the angriest looking motherfucker you can picture, right square in the center like he's gritting his teeth he's got crow's feet all his eyes because he's like glaring and squinting he looks like he's just lost his damn mind and it i wouldn't blame him this battle looks fucking chaotic there is explosions everywhere honestly the box art's really amazing looking the the airbrushing and everything looks absolutely fantastic uh i really i really enjoy the airbrushing and like i said the game actually holds up to the art uh, the graphics of the game aren't nothing to write home about, nothing too amazing, but it's still a pretty solid, it still looks pretty good. Uh, my only real criticism is that the game, it makes it a little hard sometimes to see your fighter plane on top of the background, but that's such a minor complaint, and overall, it works out pretty well. <laughs> and actually, I like on the back of the box here, it says, Actual Nintendo Entertainment System Screens Shown. <laughs> thanks thanks for the help there, Taito. So on the front of the box, it says, Nobody ever said it would be easy. Deep in enemy territory, you've got to fly your P-40 on a dangerous top-secret mission. The skies are thick with deadly rain of armor-piercing fire. Sorry, with a deadly rain of armor-piercing fire. They choose you for one reason. You're the best there is. You know the score, so aim right and fly tight. The skies are anything but friendly tonight. I actually kind of like that rhyme. Uh, only it is kind of weird because they have that little paragraph literally on the front of the box, right? And the last th the last sentence, the where it says the skies are anything but friendly tonight. It's weird because the text is broken up by the letters by the title of Sky Shark, like the logo that they chose for Sky Shark. In be right before the first S in Sky, you see the word skies are, and then. The, since it's an uppercase S, it juts up, and then in between uh, the first uppercase S of Sky and the first uppercase S of Shark, they have the word anything, and then it continues on with the rest of the sentence after that uppercase S. I'll I'll put a picture of this up. It's really freaking weird. Like I don't quite understand it. But let's read. Well, let's go on and see what the back says. Which once again, actually, now that I'm looking at it, it says nothing. I read the only thing on there. The actual Nintendo Entertainment 
system screens shown. Uh, it does have describe what you're seeing in the screenshots, like bomb out enemy artillery bunkers and tanks in the jungle, strafe and bomb boxcars and tanks in the railway railway yard, overpower squadrons of enemy aircraft and battleship fleets. So that's all it says on the back. So it's almost, it's weird because the description of the game is on the front of the box, which actually kind of is smart because I depending on how it was displayed in the store, how I mean, I didn't get to grow up with the NES, like I said. For those who did, let me know, were you able to actually pick up the boxes and flip it around and read what the back of the box said, or did you only have the cover to go off of? Did it not give you any description? So they, my argument, if they, if it is how it is now, where you can't really see the back of the box, Taito was smart, and they put their marketing, they described the game right up on the front, so that way every kid could read what it was about, it, you know, their little flavor text. And so, what's really cool, opening up the manual now, for the story segment where they have you, for the, when they go over the story, they actually have a comic book, a little six-panel comic book, and once again, the art's pretty fucking awesome. I really, I don't know who did the artwork or anything, I mean, it's nothing, the storyline is, there's just nothing, it's pretty much you have to get through a squadron of enemies to basically rescue some POWs. That's that's it. You you are a pilot going to rescue a bunch of POWs and you have to fly behind enemy lines to do it. And that's the whole story of the game. But the artwork on the manual is pretty damn impressive. I was I really enjoy it. Uh, so when we talk about the gameplay now, it is a pretty stereotypical top down, you know, like flight shooter, uh, a, a shoot 'em up or a bullet hell type of game. I won't lie when I did play this, it's really freaking difficult. It's one of the most difficult games I've played for this list, but I still really enjoyed it. The controls felt good. It didn't, you felt like you were in complete control of your aircraft. Uh, the power-ups were a little to be desired. Like there, there really wasn't much there. There pretty much was, you got bombs, which would do AOE effects, right? And then the, other than that, you had a standard shooter, like a, think of it just like a shooting missiles right and you can upgrade it to shoot up to four missiles at once so it creates kind of like a cone effect which is great but that's literally all the power-ups the game is very simple i would say the game mainly i would say the game excuse me mainly relies on its difficulty to keep the player entertained because there's not a lot of upgrade ability for your for your uh plane and i i didn't beat the game, but I watched another long play, and it's a it's a short game. Uh, the player who did it did it in 15 minutes. So if you don't die at all, you'll beat it in 15 minutes. And it's not like the uh, it, it it if it had more to do, I would say this is like a much like a like a like a hidden like a hidden like a classic. But I wouldn't say it's a classic. It's definitely a hidden gem because it's pretty good. But I wouldn't quite put it at classic status because the gameplay is just a little bit too simple. But it is overall like like I said, the controls are pretty solid. The gameplay itself is pretty solid. It's just tough as shit. It is one of the I I just can't get over how tough that game is. Uh, they throw so many enemies at you and they all shoot at you, so you have to dodge all their bullets. And I'm awful at bullet hell games. I don't understand how people can even play those where it literally takes up the entire screen and you have like a millimeter of a pixel in order to dodge that to dodge the enemies. I mean, this isn't nearly that difficult where there's, there's that many, but I don't I don't understand where those all come from but you know not my type of game but i gave it a shot and overall i would definitely suggest playing it uh so the different types of enemies are that you will end up fighting in this you have different kinds of bombers you have a enemy fighter you have a two engine bomber a four engine bomber which are pretty much you know the larger the more the bigger number of the engines the more difficult the enemy is uh you have tanks you have large naval guns you have railway tanks you have pt boats bunkers gunboats railway cars uh, super, oh, and then there's, I guess, the bosses, like Super Tank Level 1, Super Tank Level 2, and then the Single Engine Bomber. Uh, you can up, okay, so yeah, the bonus items B, so you can pick up more bombs when you see the bonus items. The S symbol is, uh, Shoot Down Formation, so you can get up to seven shots spread wide. Wow, that's actually pretty freaking awesome. Uh, each, 
basically you get this S symbol, shoot down a formation of eight red aircraft and an S will appear. Each one you collect increases the firepower of your current P-40. This special ability is lost if your P-40 is shot down. So your first S, you get four shots. Second S, four shots spread wide. Third S, five shots. Six, fourth S, six, so- six shots. Fifth S, seven shots. And then the sixth S is seven shots spread wide. That is a tongue twister. Uh, so that's pretty much all there is to the game. It's a, like I said, it's super simplistic. I really wish there was more I could talk about with it, but uh, I guess the last thing to comment on before I kind of wrap this whole thing up is the music. And once again, I was last week. I don't even remember what last week's game was. It's been so long. Oh, the ski or die. That was it. Excuse me. Like last week's game, ski or die. It was, the music was pretty awesome. I really, really enjoyed a lot of the levels. I'll put the I'll put the uh, video to the long play once again in the show notes, just so you can, if you're so inclined, go give it a watch. Because honestly, it's pretty awesome. The music surprised me. It was catchy. It was upbeat. It had this great like rhythm and melody. I definitely suggest giving it a listen. Uh, I wouldn't in- include it here, but there's just too many tracks once again for me to really like. None of them stuck out too much because I was too busy focused on not dying and. I still died a lot, but it was, you know, still worth it. Uh, so that was pretty much all I had to say about the game. I'm actually kind of bummed I could only get about 10 minutes out of this based on what I'm uh, seeing here. And that's not after editing some of my pauses out and others <laughs> and other such things. Uh, but I guess to kind of wrap this up, I will give you guys a little bit of a teaser. So... Uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, once again, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, tw- and Twitter at still loading pod on all of them, or reach out to me at, uh, via email at, at, or, uh, sorry, excuse me, still loading contact at gmail.com. Feel free to reach out to me there as well. Um, but in any case, if you follow me on Instagram, you will see, I posted a picture a little while ago about there's a project in store. And that project is coming out very, very soon. I can tell you that right now. This episode should go out on June 3rd, and I'm looking to have this as a bonus episode by next week, so June 10th. There, I put it out into the into the interwebs. It's now hopefully set in stone. I've been working hard on it. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to be, but I've got a bunch of my friends together, and we're doing something pretty fun. I, I may announce that shortly after this episode's air episode airs what exactly it is just to kind of build up some uh, attention for it hopefully you guys will like it if i do that but yeah no it's going to be a good i i'm really excited for this episode i don't know if it's going to be good or not but i'm super excited for this and i can't wait to share with you what i've been doing with it uh so that pretty much wraps everything up here uh I'm so sorry this is such a short episode. I've I've just been very busy with everything. I have a lot of ideas for the podcast. Like I said, there's going to be a fairly longer episode next week, so that should add that hopefully that will make up for this very short episode. But unfortunately, Sky Shark just didn't have a lot to talk about. It was very plain. None of the it just I there wasn't much to really do. The levels don't like unlike ski. Okay, so ski or die right there. What each. There is it was a bunch of mini games, but you can describe each mini game because they're very distinct, right? In Sky Shark, all the levels kind of blend together. And actually, before I go, a cool talking point, something I really liked about this: the levels literally do blend together, and that's not in a bad way. Every time you complete a stage, your fighter lands on an air on a runway, and the music changes to signify you or to, you know to tell you, "Hey, it's the end of this level. You you made it through." And it immediately takes off from there. It doesn't like fade to black or change screens. It literally just takes off from the same airfield it just landed on and you continue right along and that's the next level. I was really impressed by that. I thought that was a really cool idea to kind of give the player a, a, a more of a feeling of continuity and that there's this world they're a part of and they're pretty much just going straight back. Like there isn't there's not multiple missions. You you have one mission, man, and you're going straight down the enemy's throat. Like, you're going for those POWs. So it was a really interesting way to kind of make the levels 
connect together. And I thought that was really cool. I don't know if any other games have done this before, but I've never seen it. But also, like I said, I didn't grow up with the NES, so I don't know of every single game on the con- on the system. It's got a big freaking library. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of games on it. Interestingly, interestingly enough, I don't know if I said it in the last episode or not. Um, if I did, I apologize. I honestly don't remember. But I just recently got to 100 games in my NES library. Woo woo! And I was, I'm really happy about that. I finally broke the 100 game barrier on it. It's the largest library I own of any spe- uh, from one specific console. I think after that, I my collection's uh, second biggest library would either be PS3 or PS2, believe it or not. Um, while I do love all the older consoles in general more, PS3 and PS2 are the ones that I have the most of. Uh, PS4 is getting up there a little bit. Um, Xbox One, I only have like four games for. One of them's digital. I actually have more games for my Switch than I do have for the for the Xbox One. Shows you how much I play the One. But uh, I eventually do want to do like a video game room tour, but it's just, I don't know. Like I, I want to get better lighting in here because right now I only have one lamp and it only lights one half of the room. And so while it looks fine when you're standing in there, if you're trying to film it, it looks like shit. So I don't really want to uh, subject you guys to anything like that. So, all right, that I actually was able to add another couple minutes to that, so that worked out more than I thought it would. So thank you all once again for listening. Uh, I'm really looking forward to next week's uh, little surprise bonus episode. I really hope you all enjoy it. Uh, Thank you all for hanging out and following with me on this journey of the 40 for 40 series. I'm looking forward to finishing up and moving on to the next thing for this show. Uh, and yeah, so as usual, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at still loading pod on all of them. You can reach out to me at still loading, con- still loading contact at gmail.com for anything. If you want to just talk about video games, talk about life, go for it. I'm by all means, reach out to me. Uh, and then I guess, uh, please remember to rate, to review, and to subscribe to the show on iTunes, especially on iTunes, because that helps get the name out more, the more reviews. And, uh, if you write reviews or just give like four or five stars, I would obviously appreciate a five star review, but, uh, honestly, even if it's not, I just, I'm looking for feedback, man. I just, I, I'm happy that I'm, that people are actually listening to this and I thank you all the time. I can't thank you guys enough for listening to it. It means a lot. And it's it's just it's a ton of fun to do so uh yeah so please remember to rate review and to subscribe to the show and any of your podcast listening devices i mean it's on spotify it's on uh itunes it's on google play uh i need to get it on stitcher still that's the next one i need to work on but in any case thank you all once again and i will see you all next time oh and for next week before i forget i have a surprise for all you guys I'm doing a special bonus episode. It's going to be called Still Loading Storytime. You're just going to have to wait to find out exactly what it is, but I really think you're all going to enjoy it. So, bonus episode next week. It's called Still Loading Storytime. Hope to see you all there. S'il vous plaît.
300. S'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît.